Hello everybody, this is JackB1024 with another tutorial for you all. This time we're going to be filling up nuclear reactors with uranium fuel cells when the amount of steam we have stored up falls below a certain threshold. The reason for this setup is that nuclear reactors will always use up the fuel that they have in their inventory, regardless of if they need to generate that heat or not. Because of this, if you've got uranium cells in a reactor that's not having its heat used to generate steam, you're actually wasting the energy of these uranium fuel cells. So to counteract that, this system is set up so that only when our steam levels fall below a certain threshold, will we put a new cell into these reactors, thus generating some more heat to generate more steam. It's also set up so that all the reactors will be used at once. This gives us the greatest efficiency from the neighbor bonus of each of these reactors. You'll notice that in this particular setup, I'm using long-handed inserters that are grabbing from about too far away. This is not actually required. It's perfectly possible for you to use uh, fast inserters or just normal inserters with a belt that is one away. And in fact, there you can see that they will just put one cell in each of these reactors to turn them all on. Um, yeah, th this is a perfectly fine setup. The only reason I went with a two-handed setup here is so that you can use substations to easily connect the top and the bottom. And also, if you see over here, I have a design where I'm using the fact that there's a bit more room in how this is laid out so that I can use underground belt and pull off another heat pipe so that we could possibly set up you know, some more heat heat exchanges over here into some more tanks and some more steam turbines. Uh, if you want to do that with a single setup, it's possible. It just, it doesn't look as good um, as far as I'm concerned compared to this setup. And then this setup still doesn't look all that great. I think actually the layout I have right here probably looks the nicest and I would repeat that on all of these cells. But enough uh, blabbering on on my thought on the aesthetics of this whole system. Instead let's just go into how the system works. So the easiest way to see how this system works is that I'm going to build it basically from scratch explaining what each of these combinators does and the reason they exist. Now on to building our circuit network. So as you can see from this system we've currently got set up, there's no circuitry at all. Uh, the way that this is set up is just we're going to pull heat off here into these exchanges which fill up these four tanks. They will either go to these steam turbines or into these pumps which go to fluid void pumps. So when I've turned this constant combinator off, these tanks will slowly fill up. And when I turn the constant combinator on, they'll be emptied out through these fluid void pipes. So the first step we're going to want to do is we're going to want to read how much steam we have in these tanks. Because that will be the way that will determine whether or not we want to start these reactors all up, all up again. As you can see, there's no actual circuit controlling these reactors, so they're just all full of a massive number of uranium fuel cells even though, you know, all the temperatures are about a thousand degrees. So that's all just getting wasted right now. So we're going to connect all our tanks up to a single line, and we're going to put that into our decider combinator. So this decider combinator will tell us when we want our reactors to turn online. So to do that, even though, as you see, it shows steam, when you're dealing with steam, it's actually the water signal. As you can see here, our water signal is 1.7 thousand. So I'm going to set 40,000. Yeah, 40,000 as the amount of uh, steam I want backed up. So if we have less than 40,000 steam, then I want to turn these reactors on. So I'm going to choose a signal to specify that I want the reactors on. And for this build, I'm using the signal of a green signal. And so we'll output one, which will tell us, okay, turn the reactors on. I'm going to put down a light here. And this light's just going to be set to turn off and turn on if any signals, if any signal is greater than zero. 
And that way we just have a visual representation that shows us, okay, at the moment we want to turn all the reactors on. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is an SR latch. Uh, if you want a further tutorial on how SR latches work and how this one was designed, uh, you can check the description and I'll have a link to another video I made showing how SR latches work and the design of this one. But essentially SR latches are a system where you use two signals, one of them to turn the system on and another one to turn the system off. It's called an SR latch because one signal sets it to on and the other one resets it to off. So in this case, we want to set this to on whenever our green signal is greater than our off signal. This has our off signal. And for this signal, we're going to use our used up uranium cells. So going through this again, this decider combinator will tell us when we want our reactor to be turned on. So we'll use the green signal from that to set this latch to being on. And again, I'll just quickly give it a simple um, light to indicate if it's on or off. Now, why did I use a used up uranium cell as the reset signal? Well, from I think it's 0.15.6 or 0.7, I'm not entirely sure. Um, nuclear reactors have changed slightly in how they work. In 0.15.0, as soon as you put a fuel cell in, you'd get a spent fuel cell out. However, now they'll only give out a spent fuel cell when they're finished processing that fuel cell, which is quite convenient because that means we can use the fact that we've just pulled out a fuel cell to tell us, okay, our reactor's finished processing the previous fuel cell. So we're going to connect the red input from this SR latch up to this fast inserter. And it's going to be set to no mode of operation because we want it always working. And we want to read the high end contents with a hold as the read hand mode, hand read mode. That way, we're reading the signal from this telling us when we want to turn our reactors on. And we're reading the signal from this fast inserter for when our reactors have turned off. The final thing we want to do is we want to set up our arithmetic combinator down here. We're going to hook it into the red signal for this one. And we're going to say for as long as our nuclear reactors are on. So as long as this is outputting a green signal, multiply that by 40,000 and set that to our water. Now the reason for that is that we want this decider combinator to only be on when we want to turn our reactors on. Now at the moment it's telling us, okay, we want to turn them on, but we've already turned them on. That's what this decider combinator is telling us. It's telling us, okay, our reactors are on and running. So if they're on and running, we don't want to sell them to turn on again. We want to wait till they're finished running, then check if we have enough water and then turn them on again if they need to be turned on again. So by connecting the output of this arithmetic combinator up, because it's going to set whether or not it's running times 40,000 to the water output, and this thing's checking if water is less than 40,000, it is basically telling us, okay, as long as our reactors are running, pretend we have 40,000 more water than we currently do and thus we won't tell our reactors to turn back on. As you can see, this decider combinator now has an input signal of about 41,000 on the water, but 1,000 is coming from these tanks, and the other 40,000 is coming from this arithmetic combinator. So this is the basic part of the circuit um, that just controls turning our reactors on, telling us when they're on, and making sure they don't get told to turn on when they're already running. So now on to actually turning our reactors on. For that, we will have another, I'm gonna flip those two around. We have another decider combinator for each reactor. And these decider combinators are also gonna be SR latches. So they're similar to this one, except the way these ones will work is that we'll set them when we want to put some fuel into the reactor and we'll reset them when we put some fuel into the reactor. So they're basically telling us, do we need to put fuel into this reactor? So how do we know if we need to put fuel in the reactor? Well, firstly, we'll hook up the red output 
from our decider combinator that tells us to turn the reactors on. We'll hook that up to the input. We'll hook the input to the output on the green line, and we're going to use this green signal again to tell us, okay, the green signal is our set signal to tell us we need to put fuel into the reactor. Now our reset signal to tell us we don't need to put any more fuel in the reactor, we will use uranium fuel cells. And the reason for this is that, well, we have this perfectly fine inserter right here that will tell us when it's put some fuel in the reactor. So we'll just hook it up. Um, these are going to be set to override stack size to a size of one. We're going to set them to enable disable and read hand contents on held mode. Now, they're going to set to be enabled when the green signal is greater than zero. That means that this decider combinator is telling it, okay, we need to put some more fuel into our reactor. And because we're reading the hand contents, the input into this decider combinator is going to get whatever this insert is holding, including any fuel cells, which are the reset signal. So, um, you can see this one's not filling up anymore. While well, these ones, they're still filling up because I haven't actually connected them to the network yet. So to connect them to the network, just going to use the same red wire that we've got as an input to this decider combinator. I'm going to copy over the settings and again just copy over how it's set up. So we connect the input output to a green and we connect that green wire to our inserters. Then we'll get our inserter and we're going to copy its information across. So you see these are all now set to the same condition as our inserter had. Now if we pull these out, then we have none of the inserters are inserting new fuel cells in. So going back from the start, we've got this decider combinator telling us when we want to put more fuel in our fuel, in our reactors. We've got a decider combinator on each reactor, which works as an SR latch telling us, okay, we need to put more fuel in and turning off when we put some fuel in it. So for the next part, I'm going to put a break in here and we'll come back when these reactors are almost empty. So these reactors are now almost empty. And as you see, when they empty out, we're going to pull out our spent fuel cell. This light will have just turned on. Well, firstly, this light will have turned off the one on the left because we're no longer using fuel. All our reactors are turned off, which means we will check how much steam we have. We still won't have enough steam. So the right light will turn on because this decider command will tell us, okay, we need to reset our reactors and turn them all back on. That will set each of the decider combinators to insert some fuel into the reactor. And then all the reactors had one fuel cell placed in them. And once this fuel cell was placed in, all the SR latches were turned off to wait again until they're told to turn on again, which will be once the spent fuel cell is taken out. So there we have it, a very simple setup using only three combinators as a base and then one combinator for each reactor that will control putting our uranium fuel cells into our nuclear reactors when we don't have enough steam. So if I turn, yeah, because this setup is still set up. If I turn this one on, this will start avoiding all of the steam, which means you can watch the water level fall down. And once it hits 40 again, you will notice there we go. All the nuclear cell, all the nuclear reactors had a uranium fuel cell placed in them. Uh, this setup, I also added an extra light to the output of each SR latch. Set up the same as all the rest, so you would have seen them all flash green at the same time that these long-handed inserters were told to pick up their uranium fuel cells and place it into the nuclear reactor. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll answer all of them that I can. Otherwise, this is JackB1024 signing off. Have a good day.